mm-hmm. most of the old houses especially old town mm-hmm. even Kisauni and Bamburi if mm-hmm. you look at the rooftop you'll see some logs mm-hmm. that yeah. can't be anything apart from mangrove wow i've i've never really <laughs> i've never really realized that yes uh-huh. yes those are mangrove because of their uh-huh. you don't have to treat it it's a hardwood mhm i live in amchwa wala if naturally it's just like that yes yes wow. the old town is basically mangrove mhm and uh, in the 1980s just when we were getting our pre-independence and post-independence kenya mm-hmm. was a net exporter of mangrove to the arab world mm-hmm. you listening to blue radio A good morning to our listeners back at home. My name is Marisela Kimbio and welcome to the We Talk show. And as I had said earlier, we were going to be having an amazing guest today here. And muda uh, umefika, our guest is here and I'm very excited uh, to announce his presence and acknowledge him for being here today. Uh, so I'm not going to take the spotlight, you know, I never do that for my guests. I let them introduce themselves and tell us exactly who they are. So welcome very much sir thank you so uh maybe give us a brief uh, you know introduction of who you are and what you do thank you for having me here and i'm excited to be in this beautiful place and You're to welcome. meet you uh, thank you very much <laughs> yes my name is bosco john juma mm-hmm. i am an environmentalist mm-hmm. a conservationist mm-hmm. career mentor mm-hmm. and director of big ship Mm, thank yeah. you very much. As you've had uh, two corner environmental conservationist in the house and I had asked uh, you know come on to you know if you like nature if you're all about the passion of uh, you know uh, conserving the environment uh, this is the day for you uh, this is uh, your chance uh, to listen to us listen to him and uh, what he bring what he is going to be to be bringing on board for us today. So let us go for a quick break and then uh, we will be back with more. We're having a very deep detailed uh, interview today with him and is going to be giving us various uh, you know various uh, interactions and various uh, uh, projects that he's been working on so stay tuned for more when you switch on your radio when you switch on your radio it's pure vibes make no mistake this this is blue radio this is bringing the vibe And uh, welcome back as I had said earlier we are having an amazing guest. We have uh, Mr. John Bosco Juma, sorry, on our show today and he's an environmental conservationist and also a social economic development practitioner. Eish, jamani. So uh, this guy right here has amazing 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 background. Let me tell you. But uh, I want to give him this opportunity himself and uh, you know he's the co- founder and executive uh, director for the big ship conservation so uh, we want to uh, you know you, we want our listeners and i myself to know exactly what is big ship all about in uh, details so uh, mr bosco juma uh, yes. kindly uh, let us know you know inform us briefly what is big ship all about thank you once you hear about big ship Mm-hmm. Uh, of course the ocean has to come in mind mm-hmm. uh, the marine has to come in mind mm-hmm. and when that comes we talk about an ecosystem which we call the marine ecosystem mm-hmm. so big ship is an environmental conservation focusing on conserving the marine and mm-hmm. specifically uh, the mangrove forest mm-hmm. uh, but while i say that i don't want to forget that we are a human centered organization mm-hmm. so our focus is basically developing the adjacent communities who live along the mangrove ecosystem or mm-hmm. the marine ecosystem collectively mm-hmm. so when you talk about adjacent forest community how long does it take we are going about 3 to 5 km from the ocean mm-hmm. or from the marine mangrove forest mm-hmm. so probably if you talk about a, a county like mombasa mm-hmm. 5 km Mombasa is very small in terms of uh, geographical coverage mm-hmm. so more or less everybody in Mombasa is an adjacent forest community mm-hmm. by extension but here we talk about the vulnerable mostly women and youth who actually are the low cadre in the demography of uh, uh, engagement and very vulnerable people so big ship is an environmental community human based organization and our mission is promote sustainable development by empowering community through environmental initiatives mm-hmm. so the environment to use it as a facilitator of development in the community wow. we have three main key objective that we do basically is empowering communities 
advocacy on best environmental practices and of course conserving the mangrove ecosystem. Wow. And uh, from all that description, uh, I've had a lot of mangrove, mangrove, mangrove. So maybe to our listeners back at home who are not really, you know, very informed about the mangrove forest. Uh, why exactly did you, uh, did the organization really try or rather go and focus on the mangrove specifically? Why? Yeah, there's a very beautiful story behind mangrove and big sheep. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if I talk about mangrove, then I have to talk about how big sheep started in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so big sheep, I was initiated by young people mm -hmm. uh, back in 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. So we are about 13 years old now as an organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, the initiative came out as a result of economic issues. Mm -hmm. Remember, we are going up through uh, systemic issues as youth in Mombasa. And the system has been not working again, what was not working for the favor of young people, as it is now. Because even the demography at the moment, Mombasa has about 370 young people, 370,000 young people who are unemployed. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 66 to 70 percent mm -hmm. of, Momba of youths in Mombasa being unemployed. That's a big number. Mm -hmm. And with COVID-19, it brought it even higher to 78. Right now, we're talking about 80. But in this, we have about 200,000 young people, 270 young people mm -hmm. who don't have anything to do and they have not gone through the formal education. Uh, they have not gone through their fourth form and they're actually in the communities. Well, at one time. Mm -hmm. So that's the reality of where we started. And we're like, how can we create employment for our young people? And mm -hmm. we're like, yes, we can do environmental programs. You can do environmental activities. And ideally, we started with waste management. Mm -hmm. So we encouraged young people. We were young at that time and of course started with the waste management. And I'm brought up in the mangrove forest. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those who grew up, played in the mangrove ecosystem, swam in the creeks. Mm -hmm. And I could see when we were doing our waste management, we could find all our waste back into the ocean. Mm -hmm. And uh, we could see where we used to swim, where we used to play. Now we go and remove plastics, we remove papers and a lot of sewer. Uh, in the man ma marine ecosystem mm -hmm. and we're like then why don't we set up an organization wow. that will be advocating for 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 the for the mangrove and basically for the waste management issues which we started as an economic initiative mm -hmm. economic venture and while doing that uh, we realized that uh, this problem is bigger than we thought mm -hmm. it was not about our community where we were starting because we're in Mikindani, right mm -hmm. but we were like the Tudor Creek, you realize the Tudor Creek is at the heart of Mombasa. Yeah. It starts from Fort Jesus mm -hmm. all the way to, to the tail end in, in Kilif. It borders Kilif in the other end. Mm -hmm. And we realize this problem is not even about us. It's, it's the entire Mombasa. Mm -hmm. And since then, we went, how we started our advocacy in conserving the mangrove and dealing with stopping waste from the source, which is from the, our households. Wow. Yeah. That is very interesting. And uh, what has sparked me is that uh, the organization is really based on, uh, you know, helping the youth and uh, all those vulnerable people in the community and in the society that, uh, you know, cannot, uh, cannot venture or rather cannot... Uh, uh, you know, be them uh, cannot uh, get make something out of their lives, and you guys are bringing them in. Uh, also, at the same time, they are helping in conserving the environment exactly. while also giving them something an opportunity to get something out of their lives. And uh, with that, I want to know exactly like, um, what are some of the projects that Big Ship has worked on in helping uh, these vulnerable people in the community? Okay, yeah. So uh, back in 2016, mm -hmm. uh, we did a, a youth empowerment project mm -hmm. known as Imarisha Vijana. Mm -hmm. And this we did in partnership with the DFID then. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a project that we were doing in uh, Jovo Sub County, mm -hmm. where we were targeting youths below 30 years old mm -hmm. and those who have not done fourth form. Mm -hmm. Remember I gave you a, demo, a data and demography of about 200,000 young people who yeah. were within that bracket. Mm -hmm. And there we were training young people on... Uh, our organization is a labor market and information training center. Mm -hmm. So young people who want to know about jobs, want to know about capacities, they come to our organization and they get skills. Mm -hmm. So we train 580 young people on entrepreneurship, wow. life skills, uh -huh. and we linked some with job opportunities, especially in the TV sector, which was actually very, very great in our, in our spaces. Mm -hmm. That's just but one project. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, we have a project that we are launching next week. Mm -hmm. We are training green champions. Wow. Here, we are linking professionalism with conservation. Mm -hmm. For example, you're in the studio. Mm -hmm. You are a very great candidate to be in the green champion. Why? Mm -hmm. We think conservation is for people who have studied marine, environmental science, and, and social. But actually, everybody in the spectrum has a role to play in conservation. Wow. Those in the architecture, accountant, social science. Mm -hmm. So we are bringing young people who want to 
put themselves in the conserving and the climate change action issues mm-hmm. and we are training them on the basic hands on skills mm-hmm. uh, soft skills soft job skills on how they can integrate into the conservation agenda it's actually a movement mm-hmm. apart from that we have a project known as uh, uh, adopt a site mm-hmm. it's, it's our flagship project in our mangrove conservation and I think that's what has given us a lot of traction mm-hmm. so while we understood of the problem we came up with the adopt a site basically as it a program whereby mm-hmm. it just doesn't conserve the forest mm-hmm. but it becomes an ambassador for development of communities currently we have given over 70 bee hives mm-hmm. to adjacent forest community mm-hmm. we have been able to train young people and especially the communities within the ecosystem mm-hmm. in terms of how basically they can be able to do sustainable development in mm-hmm. what we call nature based solution conservation is not about just planting trees mm-hmm. it's about supporting the community al- along it Yes. Because if you plant it and then you leave the young person there, he'll go there and just destroy it. Mm-hmm, right. Lastly, we have a project on waste to value, mm-hmm. or we, t- we call it resource collection. And mm-hmm. this is now a waste management uh, uh, strength program, whereby we are w- working with young people in the value chain of waste management to ensure mm-hmm. we stop waste from the source. Mm-hmm. Wow, this is this is really interesting. And I, I also saw about um uh, you know the restoring the Tudor Creek, okay? And uh you've mentioned that uh you grew up, you know, swimming around there. And uh okay, maybe okay, from my from my conversation with you, I've gathered that uh, probably the inspiration was because you were part of the you know, you grew up there and you you experienced all that. But uh what about the other parties? Were they the other people that you're working with? Were both of you, you know, uh, around there that time, or rather, what is the inspiration behind you guys really wanting to restore that Tudor Creek? Uh, the inspiration basically is because uh, we, we we were there. We have seen it. Mm-hmm. We have seen the degradation. We have seen the pollution. Mm-hmm. But also, one other very beautiful thing about it mm-hmm. is the economic value that we saw then. Mm-hmm. And uh, at times when you've been pushed in the corner. On economic issues, you want to find your way of surviving mm-hmm. for survival purposes, and uh, the mangrove forest is a hardwood, mm-hmm. very valuable. And at that time, it was costing about three hundred and fifty to four hundred to get a fencing pole. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, it's good to be young and ambitious. Mm-hmm. We're like, if it is three hundred and fifty to buy one pole, mm-hmm. okay, how about right now if you plant ten thousand? Mm-hmm. with the intention that in 10 years mm-hmm. in 15 years we are going to sell those poles mm-hmm. okay and that's how we started our conservation basically we were like uh, it we were young and we could think and we were like uh, right now if i am i was 24 there about at that time mm-hmm. and i was like if i can do the 10000 trees now mm-hmm. 3000 350 times 10000 is 350000 mm-hmm. 3.5 million mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. yeah about So like I think it won't cost me anything. I'll plant and then I'll go my way. Eventually, God willing, if I'll be at my uh, 35, mm-hmm. uh, 10 years later, I'll be able to cut them and sell. And that's what the idea. And we did that basically mm-hmm. in our own efforts. Wow. And we went to the government and like you know we have planted some trees that we're intending to cut. Uh-huh. And then the government like which trees do you want to cut? Mm-hmm. You see, and they told us the gravity of the situation currently. Mm-hmm. And that's how we found the value of the tree when it is standing rather than when it is cut. Mm-hmm. Well, you see, the agenda was to cut and sell yeah. eventually. Mm-hmm. But those ten thousand trees that we did then, mm-hmm. right now they are a very good learning platform. Mm-hmm. Actually, it is one of the permanent research plots mm-hmm. which we have partnered with Kemfree mm-hmm. to establish community restored sites. Mm-hmm. So we ended up being some of the pioneers of the community restored sites along the coast region. Mm-hmm. So the current research that are seeing what is the efficacy. Or, or the success of restored sites by community you can see most young people are in the forest right mm-hmm. at the moment but uh, that site which we did then is now a very good it's grown actually it's so big i think it, i'll share with you some of the photos it's a big forest of course right? yes and mm-hmm. a lot of biodiversity in it there's some birds in it uh-huh. some crabs in it wow yeah so as i'm uh, taking you back to mangrove uh, what are some of the products that uh, you know one can get out of mangrove literally <laughs> Mangrove first is an indigenous tree mm-hmm. here on the coast. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's God given. Mm-hmm. It was here. We call them man- ecosystem mangrove ecosystem services. The value of the mangrove. Mm-hmm. So one, it is uh, very good for housing. Mm-hmm. Most of the old houses, especially old town, mm-hmm. even 
Kisauni and Bamburi. If mm-hmm. you look at the rooftop, you'll see some logs. Mm-hmm. That yeah. can't be anything apart from mangrove. Wow, I've n- I've never really <laughs> I've never really realized that. Yes, uh-huh. yes, those are mangrove because of their. Uh-huh. You don't have to treat it; it's a hardwood. I live in Amchwa. Well, if naturally, it's just like that. Yes, yes. Wow, the old town is basically mangrove. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the 1980s, just when we were getting our pre-independence and post-independence, Kenya mm-hmm. was a net exporter of mangrove to the Arab world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, apart from building and housing, it's mm-hmm. a good fuel. Mm-hmm. And uh, this, this is again the challenge. This beauty of the mangrove now, people what people are pursuing. It's a very good fuel. Mm-hmm. It's being uh, uh, harvested a lot. That's why 70% of mangrove in Chuda Creek is destroyed, mm-hmm. degraded, and mm-hmm. mostly is because of encroachment mm-hmm. and the fuel issue. Three mangrove, we call it regulatory services. Mm-hmm. In this service, mangrove regulate the aeration it absorbs this is we could talk about carbon absorption mm-hmm. mangrove absorbs carbon 10 times mm-hmm. more than the terrest- any other tree yeah so what does that mean it cleans the air mm-hmm. for us it cleans the air wow. so if you sit in a mangrove tree mm-hmm. and you just want to feel fresh air you want to just clear your mind and all that it's the best place you'll be because of the ability to eat to sequester and to be able to to change it. another thing uh-huh. it's a very great protector uh-huh. yeah it is a it has a very strong root system mm-hmm. and it protects us from the wave and the wind and the tsunamis mm-hmm. during the tsunami those islands that had mangrove mm-hmm. actually remained intact mm-hmm. yeah and not just in the tsunami during the tsunami era, even recently we have been having storms mm-hmm. in the philippines and those countries that have have, have mangrove and realize those areas with mangrove are very intact mm-hmm. yeah so what does this tell us about mombasa as an island mm-hmm. it means when those situation will come our way remember what climate change is it has erratic weather you mm-hmm. have rains and flash floods and all that so those mangrove actually protects us not just us even the fish yeah, yeah. right it is a breeding ground mm-hmm. you can it i like calling it maternity ya samaki okay. <laughs> uh-huh. so fish goes there mm-hmm. they lay their eggs mm-hmm. and then they go to the deep sea mm-hmm. the fish you'll eat today for lunch mm-hmm. yeah be sure it went somewhere in the mangrove mm-hmm. because there they're being protected from the predators mm-hmm. and then there is food there so it's the right environment for 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 breeding for the fish as they go to the mm-hmm. to the sea There's a lot about the ecosystem services as I could say. Wow. I'm learning a lot. I'm learning so much about the mangrove that I thought I knew. Uh personally I've just been uh, you know uh in trips such as Malindi, you know, seeing mangrove forestry, but uh, I've never really put it into consideration about, you know, uh, how mangrove is really you know really important in the society how it's really important in the ecosystem and all that but i'm glad you're here today to inform us and all that I, i'm learning a lot and i hope our listeners back at home are learning a lot too so we're going to go for a quick short break and then we'll be right back with more from our very able mr bosco juma so stay tuned for more this is blue radio don't forget to interact with us through all our social media platforms at uh, blue radio ke and on facebook at blue radio kenya Welcome back our listeners. Uh this is the We Talk show. My name is Maricela Kimbio and as I said earlier, we have an amazing guest. To those who are just tuning in, we have Mr. Bosco Juma in the house who is an environmental and conservationalist and also the co-founder of Big Ship Conservation Organization. And speaking of Big Ship, I have uh, I've seen that um you guys have a a program known as the Volunteership volunteership eh and internship and internship mentorship program eh kidogo kizungu kinanikanganya lakini ni sawa you can just say vimp <laughs> that is the vimp yeah the vimp <laughs> program so i've seen a lot of uh, you know amazing uh, how would i put it amazing uh, progress or rather amazing inspirational uh, outcome out of the vimp program so maybe to our listeners back at home uh, give them uh, a brief you know summary of what the vimp program is all about Thank you. Uh, Vim is a volunteership internship mentorship program. Mm-hmm. Maybe a bit mouthy, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you can just say Vim uh-huh. and it becomes easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Vim is actually a mentorship program mm-hmm. uh, that was initiated by the organization mm-hmm. with the intention of bringing young people to the speed with where we are and this in the 21st century job skills. Mm-hmm. So it's a platform that mm-hmm. we created within our organization mm-hmm. for young people to come and discover. Mm-hmm the job market and labor market skills. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about job market and labor market skills what do you mean? 
we talk about soft skills that are needed for you to survive in this uh, uh, job market space. So labor market, we call it ujuzo uh, kutafuta kazi. How to write a winning CV, mm -hmm. how to prepare for, for, for an interview, mm -hmm. and uh, those skills that will make you more competitive. Remember, we have so many graduates. We have so many people. The labor market is huge here in Africa and in Kenya specifically. You have a lot of people who have gone to school, mm -hmm. but they're not accessing the job opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But there are those who have those skills on how to get a job. Those mm -hmm. are what we call labor market skills. Okay, And now job market skills are the soft skills that you need. Not just soft skills. What employer wants for you? Let's assume you are you are, you are, you are, you are a nurse. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have gone through the nursing school like any other nurse. Mm -hmm. Okay, but once you are going to the employment, there's very specific thing that the employer wants from you, mm -hmm. and that's what will make you to even be promoted in your job market. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you not be promoted just because of your degree, but because of what you can do. Mm -hmm. So what is that? Is what we call the skill. So it's a platform for young people to discover and develop their job market and labor market skills. One, two, mm -hmm. it's an ecosystem. We create it as an ecosystem whereby we are integrating young people with those from the industry mm -hmm. and then the academia. So we have a partnership with the universities mm -hmm. and some TVET institutions mm -hmm. whereby they bring their internship program students mm -hmm. to our organization mm -hmm. to create that ecosystem. So while you are in an organization, whether you are still an intern or you have just graduated and you just want to find your footing, once you come to organization, uh, you are able to interact with the industry you went to. Let's say you went to tourism. Mm -hmm. That's what you studied, right? Mm -hmm. So if you come to organization, we have a very good niche with the tourism market. Mm -hmm. Okay. So working in organization, we integrate you with our programs that link with the tourism aspect aspect of it, and of course linking with the academia and the community. So that's why we call it an, as an ecosystem. Thirdly, mm -hmm. the VIM program is a springboard. Mm -hmm. to your job opportunity. Wow. Because we are creating that market mm -hmm. and we are creating linkage and then we are preparing these young people for mm -hmm. that job opportunity. So after training you all that, how to do a winning CV, you have, you have prepared you on your, on your labor market skills, mm -hmm. we, have created, we have put you in that ecosystem mm -hmm. and we have put you in that platform. Mm -hmm. What we expect is you to go out there and solve problems mm -hmm. and be a transformer and a change maker. Mm -hmm. And right now we have over, over 80 eight, young people who have gone through that program mm -hmm. and uh, that has been initially and uh, purely through our organizational initiatives and most of these are ranging from graduates some who have done their degree their first degree their second degree mm -hmm. those who are just uh, finishing their colleges and those who have also gone worked and come back mm -hmm. there are people who are, you could be in this career and you want to do a career shift or you just want a career guidance on what can you do mm -hmm. or you want to learn about environment or mm -hmm. you want to know how to engage or you want to volunteer mm -hmm. i talked about internship but now let me talk about volunteership mm -hmm. volunteership is for someone who knows what he's doing and you uh -huh. want to give back so right. you could have already worked for those many years and you want to come back to the community and give back mm -hmm. in that ecosystem i mentioned mm -hmm. you come back from the industry Mm -hmm. You volunteer, you give your volunteership hour. Mm -hmm. We link you with an intern who is just going where you have, go, you have come from. Okay. Yeah, so it's not just for students. Uh -huh. It's actually for, that's why I call it volunteership is actually those who are out there. Internship is those who are learning for the, mm -hmm. they are learning about the job. But mm -hmm. volunteers, those who have already learned, they want to give back. Oh. So you can come and register with us. You can mm -hmm. go to our website. You can mm -hmm. write us an email. You can just uh, WhatsApp me. Mm -hmm. As long as you get that opportunity to access to this program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what we have been doing over time. What is the success in that? Mm -hmm. People have been in career that they don't know how they went there. Mm -hmm. And this is the reality of things. Mm -hmm. And it's actually something that I wish our universities and our learning institution would have looked at very critically. Because mm -hmm. you will be bombarded with those technical skills of learning. Mm -hmm. But the soft skill on how are you going to survive in this and how do you even find yourself in this career is something very critical. Mm -hmm. People don't have business plan. Mm -hmm. They don't have uh, uh, sorry, they don't have career plans. Mm -hmm. They don't know why they need a CV. Have you seen someone who's graduated and doesn't have a CV? Mm -hmm. And he doesn't think even why he should even have it in the first place. Mm -hmm. okay. So that is a very critical thing because uh, by the time time has gone and then you're like, you wasted yourself. Mm -hmm. Some people do causes for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. So career guidance has been a very critical one. And we have seen young people opening up mm -hmm. and uh, finding their niche. And uh, we have young people who are in the in, in, in places currently that I, I know of from our organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the unique thing about the program. 
Wow. So uh, our listeners back at home will be sharing their contact details shortly. So don't say, uh, you know, don't, don't leave this. Eh? Don't leave this platform. Eh? <laughs> Amazing content. And uh, while uh, still talking about the VIMP program, uh, I want to know, are there any challenges that you, you as an organization have faced uh, during this program? And not only on VIMP, but rather all the other programs that are associated or, or, are, under, or are under the Big Ship program, literally. Thank you. One thing is demand. Mm -hmm. Our organization has a specific capacity mm -hmm. of young people we train over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told you we work with universities. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a great program with KU, mm -hmm. especially in our natural resource marine conservation program. Mm -hmm. KU has been a lot of, uh, uh, doing a lot with us. Wow. Uh, TUM, mm -hmm. Egerton, Nairobi University. So mm -hmm. these students know about us. They know about this program because uh, friend tell a friend thing. Mm -hmm. you see? So uh, we always have a lot of young people who want to join in but unfortunately after every, every semester we have at least six we can accommodate five to six and uh, there's once after during COVID-19 schools were locked mm -hmm. and uh, we had a lot of young people who wanted to come and, and mm -hmm. do the internship volunteer some have just graduated mm -hmm. and we had at that time for the first time we had a one batch of 10 people at a go Wow. We stretched ourselves so hard but mm -hmm. I think it's something that is understandable and mm -hmm. uh, apart from that I uh, <coughs> excuse me uh the resources to do that because mm -hmm. uh once you're in that program we ensure that you are facilitated mm -hmm. you're facilitated to to do what you get to do okay mm -hmm. uh, to go to the field mm -hmm. uh to be able to 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 sit in some of our programs it it comes with a cost mm -hmm. and uh we have been doing it internally so that has been one of them a bit of a, of a challenge mm -hmm. and other than just like a mother Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when you are born, you go with the piece of your mom, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So all these people always go with a piece of us, mm -hmm. and we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But at uh, times you realize uh, uh, you 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 find yourself in a situation whereby uh, you want to to maintain your organization, mm -hmm. but you see we have had people opening theirs. It's a very good thing through our organization. We know people who have established institutions, mm -hmm. yes, and we do mentor them to ensure they grow and become better. Wow. Yeah, but at times you have a challenge. You know, you have uh, information controls mm -hmm. in your organizations mm -hmm. and how you do your thing. Mm -hmm. But as an organization, you'll always open up for the young people. I think that's some of the bit of the challenge I can mention. Mm -hmm. But generally, even as an organization, some of the challenges that do exist mm -hmm. is inclusivity of young people in opportunities. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Thank you very much for that. And uh, I, I really like the mentorship and all that that it is revolving around, you know, empowering everyone in the society, not only the youth, but also... Uh, even grown-ups, you can yeah. have your father there and, uh, you know, he, he also has a passion for conserving the environment. Exactly. He's also eligible to join exactly. the, that program. Uh, that is very interesting. And uh, we're going to go for a quick short break and we will be back with more. Don't forget to interact with us through all our social media platforms at Blue, Blue Radio KE and on Facebook at Blue Radio Kenya. And also through my own personal social media handles at Maricela underscore Kimbio on Instagram, Maricela Kimbio on uh, Twitter and Maricela Bell, that is B-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, on Facebook. So stay tuned for more. And a good morning to our listeners back at home. We are back on the show. My name is Maricela Kimbio, your host for the We Talk. And we have an amazing guest today. For those who had joined in earlier, we have Mr. Bosco Juma, uh, who is an environmental and conservationalist. And uh, we are continuing back with our conversation. So... Mr. Bosco, uh, this is a rather quite a personal question that I want to ask. Uh, how would you describe your journey to, to be as an environmental conservationist? Being a leader, mm -hmm. you always walk uncharted paths. Mm -hmm. You create your own path. Mm -hmm. You not follow foot, footsteps. Mm -hmm. And I think that is always a very uh, critical thing to understand at the point, point of the start of it all. Mm -hmm. So my journey has been interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of sacrifices had to be made mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, that makes me to be very passionate about career mentorship mm -hmm. because everything we do needs a very decisive decision from the word go. Mm -hmm. uh, my journey had been uh, involved in terms of uh, learning from my peers Mm -hmm. uh, learning from my challenges, mm -hmm. right from uh, how I started uh, being a conservationist, mm -hmm. it has been an inspiration all through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and being a leader, one thing that I, I say mm -hmm. is always maintaining focus. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's very good to start from the onset knowing what you want mm -hmm. and where you want to be. Mm -hmm. Look at look at me; it's like fourteen years, man. 
mm-hmm. like 14 years. Mm-hmm. So it means through those 14 years I've been able to learn a lot and I was in a field which is not uh, really really very well uh, looked into. Mm-hmm. Even up to now you may be surprised environment is not one of the most finance programs mm-hmm. compared to health and maybe security and all these other th- which people are doing in the NGO world. Mm-hmm. So in I was in a path or I'm in a path which still needs a lot of facilitation and financing from even development partners the government and mm-hmm. even other funding organization mm-hmm. but uh, being true to what you want and keeping your promise is very critical mm-hmm. yeah. Th- thank you very much and uh let me ask uh, i have some few questions uh, rather two questions before we close our show because it is exactly 11:55 a.m. and uh the, we we witnessed uh, the president uh, he recently lifted the monitorium for uh, tree logging so how is that you know uh affecting you or rather how is it going for you as an organization before the lifting of the ban mm-hmm. where were we mm-hmm. we were at 7% mm-hmm. forest cover mm-hmm. or less and here in Mombasa mm-hmm. we were just struggling with a degraded ecosystem which is the mango forest mm-hmm. and I, I mentioned in the beginning about the logging which was going on mm-hmm. and presented and everybody you could go to he said he has the the permit mm-hmm. here in Mombasa so when the the the, the ban was actually uh, enacted or was put in place mm-hmm. it was a quite a relief i'm telling you mm-hmm. especially for we were doing that advocacy at that particular time mm-hmm. and i know it I, I, it had also its own challenges because there are some people whom that was their livelihood especially in the likes of lamu mm-hmm. where by the majority the economy depends on the mangrove mm-hmm. yeah so that was quite an issue but for us it was a success Wow. But now with mm-hmm. the lifting of the ban, where does it leave us? Mm-hmm. Right now we were talking of uh, we are talking of 12.5 around 12% forest cover from the 7 I mentioned back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and about 8% of tree cover nationally. Mm-hmm. And this has been attributed with the with, with, with the ban that mm-hmm. was there because it gave time for the forest to grow. Mm-hmm. You no know one thing the beauty about the forest, it brings itself back mm-hmm. if not interrupted. So with the lifting of the ban now, Mm-hmm. I'm seeing a situation by where, by where we'll, be, we'll be going back to where we were mm-hmm. and uh, that's because uh, lift of the ban we are not told of the controls that have been put in place not to go back where we were mm-hmm. and I think that's the challenge that I'm seeing from where I'm seated so it, all is not rosy I think we just need to see what exactly the government has in place mm-hmm. to ensure we don't go back to where we were in the years amazing so uh what uh what exactly what does the future look like for big ship you know as a conservation organizations or rather what are the plans that uh, the organization has put in place for the future when we started the focus was on chuda creek mm-hmm. and basically the mombasa mangroves mm-hmm. so currently we are doing a program with the kfs by the this month is world mangrove month wow on 26th of july we'll be mm-hmm. celebrating world mangrove day mm-hmm. and we've been inviting blue radio to be our partner we'll be there we'll be inviting you to be a <laughs> partner please uh, we uh-huh. are meeting every tuesday mm-hmm. at the kenya methodist university mm-hmm. and uh, we are planning great stuff for Mombasa especially we are planning to do a marathon a mangrove marathon wow with an intention of ensuring that uh, we put beacons mm-hmm. in the encroachment areas of Mombasa mm-hmm. we want to ring the forest mm-hmm. also another thing that we want to do is to bring the community into the conservation agenda mm-hmm. those are the two main things we want to do with our marathon which should be in 22nd of this month wow yeah but back to what uh, we have been able to do as an organization and what is our future mm-hmm. so with this engagement mm-hmm. we are looking at the five counties of of the coast region which have mangrove mm-hmm. because currently as an organization we have experts we are experts in monitoring we are mm-hmm. doing gis and remote sensing mm-hmm. so our level of conservation and management is quite, quite a, at a high stage mm-hmm. so currently we are looking at going nationally with this program mm-hmm. so as an organization uh, we are setting up our ngo we are going to re-register and put ourselves in a manner that we can be able to deal with the demands that are coming in remember we are a committee based organization mm-hmm. yeah so i believe before the end of the year we'll be coming here and we'll be celebrating uh, an, an, a new big ship wow yeah because our focus was chuda creek mm-hmm. but now we're looking at the entire mangrove forest mm-hmm. uh, in the case in, in the kenyan uh, in the kenyan region mm-hmm. yeah Oh wow that's interesting I, i'm looking forward to the successes of uh, the big ship organization and uh wishing you all the very best as an organization in all the plans and strategies that you have put in place and uh before we close the show because uh, it's 1 minute to 12 noon uh can you give our our listeners you know uh contacts and how they can reach you uh, as an organization great uh 
first use our social media handles mm-hmm. they're very effective mm-hmm. uh, at big ship underscore cbo mm-hmm. in facebook mm-hmm. at twitter mm-hmm. uh, we are at big ship cbo just like that okay also you can visit our website at www.bigship.org mm-hmm. yeah and uh, you can follow me on my facebook mm-hmm. at bosco juma mm-hmm. and then also on twitter at bosco juma Wow, yes. amazing. So as you've had our listeners back at home, is on your social media handles or make sure you reach out to them in case you want to join in the organization or rather if you also want to learn more about uh in conserving the ecosystem. And uh, it is it is exactly 12 noon and uh, this marks the end of my show today. So thank you guys for tuning in to the We Talk show. It was very interactive, it was amazing. Uh, I had an amazing lineup for you guys and all those who tuned in Thank you very much. Make sure you catch me next week same place at same time. Uh the our time is 9 a.m. to 12 noon. And uh don't forget to follow us through all our social media platforms that is at Blue Radio KE and also uh on uh, Facebook at Blue Radio Kenya. You can also follow me through my own personal social media handles at Maricela underscore Kimbio on uh, Instagram and on Facebook at Maricela Bell that is B E L E and on Twitter at Maricela Kimbio. You're listening to Blue Radio and we're bringing you the vibe. From Mombasa, Kenya. Kenya. This is Blue Radio. Radio. When you switch on your radio